Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today we're gonna to talk about the best practices when setting up high-level workflows. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so if you're listening to this video right now, you probably know what high-level is. So maybe three or four years ago, I first came across high-level, and, uh, and I actually wasn't that impressed. We went with uh, one of their competitors, and um, you know, in hindsight, that's been probably a pretty bad decision on, on our behalf because what they've achieved um, recently is just is just insane. Like the the amount of uh, um, kind of care that they have for their the people their their clients, their amount of work they put in, the support that they have, their ability to um, you know help help their people like me who are educators promote their product. They'll bend over backwards and, and help you. And usually that's a really good sign when you're getting involved with software as a service because they're going to continue to put the user, i.e. us, um, you know, before profit. And, um, you know, they, they've just done an exceptional job. But I'm a really big fan. So one of the, you know, major um, differences I've seen of late is their workflow. And it's taken them, you know, way past the competitors, in my opinion, just how um, easy it is to use and what a, you know the user interface how it looks um, it's just really is fantastic uh, so without further ado I'm going to pass you over to Graham who's my kind of tech genius and he's going to show you what this looks like and um, he's smiling as I said that he's just sitting over there um, I'll, I'll let him take take over and uh, you know yeah get stuck in enjoy and of course if you've got any questions below or you need help with anything please comment in the comment box and we'll take it from there Thanks, Dan. Um, so, yeah, guys, this is just a quick, uh, going to go a quick overview of the Go High Level uh, workflow area. Um, so, basically, those of you who've been using uh, High Level for a while, on their old um, kind of user interface, you had campaigns and triggers that were separate, and you had to set up your campaigns, and then your triggers would trigger events such as tagging, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it wasn't very linear. It was a bit clunky, a bit all, all over the place. And to be honest, I didn't particularly like it that much. Um, but what Go, Go High Level have done is they've got a new interface um, and it's kind of brought it into the 21st century. Um, so it's keeping up with the competition like Active Campaign and things like that with their automations. Um, and it's just way more easier to see kind of what's happening in your flow and easier to create them really as well. Um, now, one issue some people are having are how to transfer over their campaigns and triggers to workflows. Um, so what we're going to go through now is firstly how to do that. Uh, and then secondly, how to set up, uh, you know, a, a pretty decent workflow. OK, so first of all, how do we get um, the old campaigns and triggers into workflows? Now, if you've taken a snapshot from an old UI and uploaded it into a new UI, you will find that you'll have campaigns and triggers up here. Um, if you haven't, and you're working straight from the new UI, these two uh, tabs won't be there, and you'll just have the workflow tab. Okay, so you can ignore what I'm just about to say. But for those who do have these um, these here, and you want to try and create these in a workflow, uh, it's pretty simple. You just go to create workflow, and then what you want to do is you want to import from a campaign. You want to select uh, the campaign that you want to import um, and then you want to press uh, create new workflow. Uh, close. Um, so this will put all your emails and your wait times into a workflow and then you have to add a trigger. Uh, so what trigger the workflow? So you, that's the only thing you have to bring over from your old trigger section. Um, and then you can add in tagging and things like that. Okay, that was a very basic campaign we did there. Um, so I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna show you how to do one from scratch now. So that's basically how you import your old campaigns. And then you have to input your triggers and tags and things like that yourself. So uh, to create one, um, you can either create it from scratch or go ahead level have uh, some good recipes uh, for certain actions. So, you know, appointment confirmation, uh, auto missed call tech back. Uh, Facebook Messenger, um, list reactivation. So there's a lot of good recipes in here. Um, so you can pick one of these and then um, use it um, yourself. So, or you can do one from scratch. I'm going to pick a recipe just so I have a, a, a base to work with. 
um, and let's just do this, uh, which is a um, appointment confirmation and reminder. And you just go up, once you've selected that, press create new workflow. And it kind of creates just a simple linear workflow. Um, so the trigger is off appointment status. I often prefer to use customer booked appointment um, purely because this seems to work better, especially for when you're triggering the Facebook conversion API. Um, that's the trigger I, used to, I like to use for appointments. Um, uh, and yeah, so you can do that and then just save the trigger there. I'll delete that. Um, and then you've got your emails. Uh, you can add in texts. You can do a, a call, voicemail, messenger. So there's a lot of different actions you can take. You can add tags. You can add opportunities in your pipeline. Um, you can add notes, um, assign to user. Uh, all of these things here. Um, so you can remove and add to workflows. Um, you can remove an opportunity. Set them to do not uh, deliver. Um, add tasks. You can charge on Stripe as well, which, is, which has been pretty cool for us. You can do a one-time charge in your Stripe account. Uh, so then you can charge per lead, which is pretty cool. Um, you've got all this stuff. You can start creating conversion APIs and audiences off, off the back of that. You can update a contact field. Um, now here are, here are the things, the conditions, workflows, which I think really make this really good. Um, you can basically perform math operations. Uh, you can do webhooks, so I use a lot of Zapier catch hooks to catch data and throw them into other kind of CRMs or uh, other places I would want them to go. Uh, that's always a good uh, tool to use there. Weights, which is like the wait times, uh, and that even means that you can wait um, for them to, to reply, uh, which is a pretty cool uh, function that uh, they've added. And also the if else. Uh, so I, I like using this because it's conditionally based. Um, you can do it um, if they have replied, but it needs, if you want to use that, uh, you need to change this to wait for contact reply. You've got to select what you want to wait for the reply from. So that's the email here. And then you want a timeout of, say, one day. Uh, and once you've done that here, you can then add in um, and if else, and you can do contact reply, contact replied. So that could just be a standard yes, no, if they've replied or not. Uh, so as soon as they reply, they'll hit that, um, they'll hit this uh, condition. Uh, you can do intent type as well. Um, so this is pretty cool. It can kind of tell from the text if it's positive or not. So if it's positive, you can send them one text. If it's negative, you can send them another type of text. Um, um, and then replied me me message, uh, and then you can, if you've asked them to text back a certain phrase uh, or message, um, then you can look out for that as well. So just to show you one of our live uh, workflows that we've got going at the moment, um, again, this is for our um, group growth that we're doing paid media for. Um, we have uh, organic, oh, so we have paid opt-ins, to the paper lead ninjas uh, and then we also have a tag for if they become uh, a group member of paper lead ninjas uh, so the way our funnel works is we have kind of like a lead form um, where they um, show their interest in joining the group uh, and then we also have a, a zap for when they join the group uh, to add a tag onto them um, so we know who have opted in but haven't joined the group and who have opted in and joined the group and we've also got organic group group joins as well so here we have a little opt-in, uh, sorry, a little condition to see if they have opted in via paid or if they're organic. If they're paid, they go down this section. If, they go, if, if they're not, they go down this section. Um, this just um, creates a different opportunity for them both and then uh, gives the tag organic so we know who's organic and who's paid. And then they all go down this, um, this path uh, where we send them an email and an SMS, um, giving them one of multiple offers that we're doing currently. Then we have a wait one day for reply. So basically, if they reply, they'll go straight through. Otherwise, they wait for a day uh, before they go straight through. Um, so if they reply and they go they go straight down here, they go into the yes column. If they don't reply uh, after a day, after a day, they'll flop, uh, they'll drop down here and they'll go down the no section where they get a different type of email. Uh, so if they have replied, they get taken out of the automation, basically. 
they get added initial reply and then we get a, no a notification to say someone's re someone's replied and then we can start having a conversation with them if they haven't replied then we send them another email um wait a day and then uh, we have another email and sms with our offers um and then that's where we leave it you can make it way longer um uh, but yeah, that's basically how we set up our, our workflows. There's so much uh, cool stuff you can do. Um, if you're watching this video and you are got an idea of what you want to do, but you're not sure how to do it, um, do drop a comment below uh, and I'll try and help you out as best I can. Um, but yeah, guys, it's, a, it's an awesome system. This new interface is so much better than the old one. Um, and these workflows are going to be a game changer for a lot of marketers. Um, and I'm hearing a lot of a lot of good good reviews coming back from this new um, in, interface. And there's a lot of people who used to use it, who who dropped it, um, who don't know that they've um, updated all this kind of stuff. Um, so I would definitely go ahead uh, and give it an, another go. Um, and if you do want to give it another go, there's a little link below uh, where we've got a link that allows you to have 30 days free trial rather than 15 free uh, 15 days free trial it gives you a little bit longer to play around with to see see if you actually want it um so yeah i'm going to put that in the uh, comments and the description uh, and if you want to have a go on it then feel free to okay thanks a lot guys uh, and i'll see you on the next one cheers bye, -bye. one of the great things about high level um and i guess any crm that's worth its weight um, is it gives you the ability to um, you know, email and SMS your database, right? So let's say you're uh, um, running ads to land clients and we've got some, some training on, on how, how we do this using Facebook lead ads. There'll be a link in the description as well or you'll be able to find that. Um, but one thing that I love is when you have the ability to add clients inside your, 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 your kind of database, your high level kind of database, what you can do is you can sell to them forever at this point in time. This is a big mistake most people make is that they don't do that. They kind of, it's a one and done type scenario. But if you know me and you know my community, I'm always kind of making offers to people, all right? I've tried content versus offers. Content's great, people love content, but guess what gets the most engagement when you're making offers? People and your clients want to buy from you. So if you have the ability to continually, you know, reposition the same offer over and over again, then go ahead and do that. Um, we explain how to do all of this. Um, we explain how to get clients and nurture them and all that kind of cool stuff and sell to them without phone calls. In my um, recent Ask Me Anything on our B2B client getting um, formula, as I said, there'll be a link to the AMA below. It's a pay what you want after you watch it. You're gonna love it. Speak soon.